What's up everybody and today we're checking out why was this plane invulnerable the SR-71 Blackbird story I have no idea I have no information on this aircraft I have no no idea what it is or what it's about or what it does uh, so this will be an interesting one I've been sent this one a couple times actually um, so we will see what it's all about it's a relatively older video being five years old but it's a relatively popular video coming in 11 million views and people have said that it's a really good video so we should check it out we should have some fun as always if you don't want to hear me waffling over the video the uh, link to the original video in the description as always i don't have to keep repeating it but i'm going to anyway check out the original video if you don't want me waffling um don't forget to like comment and subscribe my youtube analytics says that over 90 percent of people who watch these videos are not subscribed so if you could subscribe that would help a lot with that mysterious YouTube algorithm that we know nothing about. Uh, other than that, this is by Mustard. I haven't said that. Other than that, let's shut up. Let's pull this up. Let's have a cheeky peek. Holy, that just nearly blew my eardrums. Turn that down a little bit. Sorry, guys. Thanks to Squarespace for making this video possible. Jesus and for helping wept. launch my new mustard store. More on that after this video. I wonder what types of mustard he sells. In the midst of the Cold War, two MiG-25s raced to intercept the threat along yeah. the Soviet border. They're I the feel like the MiG interceptors ever built, and if the, the MiG-25 was so much, uh, you know, had so many worries behind it from the West, it really didn't turn out to be that much, did it? Really? Obviously, it's still a good craft, but it was just more like about pure power and speed they really push their engines they can reach an incredible mach 3.2 but it's not enough because what they're chasing <clears throat> can outrun and outclimb any threat Ooh. a plane engineered to be invulnerable it's like a spaceship it's like it's from star wars do you know what it looks like what's the um people are gonna think i'm a right geek here the the craft the obi-wan and um qui-gon jinn use that goes to naboo and they have to get a new part for it and where they find luke uh, where they find anakin skywalker that silver aircraft i'm pretty sure it's part of um uh what's she called the queen amidala natalie portman it's part of her fleet or something it's like silver it looks just like that i gotta google this I gotta Google this. Uh, silver ship. Star Wars. Naboo. This will come up with it. No, that's not the one. I'm not gonna find it, am I? Uh, silver ship. Star Wars. Episode one. Come on, give me an image. Give me an image. No, not that one. God damn it! I gotta find this. That's it. Is that what it's called? The Royal Starship. Star Wars Royal Starship. Images. That's the one. I guess it. Yeah, it kind of looks like it. Am I? Am I that much of a geek? Am I that much of a geek? Just pause the video for like a minute to search a Star Wars <laughs> The Blackbird. Okay, just paint it silver and we'll, we'll pretend it's from Star Wars. The Cold War locked the United States and Soviet Union into a tense struggle for global influence and control. Both sides poured enormous resources into military technologies. But getting an upper hand means knowing your opponent's next move. True. And in the 1950s, little was known about facilities deep within the Soviet Union. An extensive network of radar stations, surface-to-air missile sites, and interceptor air bases kept the Americans away. This, this, I feel like, was the Soviet Union's peak. And I feel like it's been going downhill from here. Wouldn't you agree? Russia's just been going downhill. It's not the Soviet Union anymore. It's just Russia, but... It's definitely been going downhill from here, I think, for them, struggling. Until 1956, when U-2 spy planes began flying over the Soviet Union. I didn't know Neither the band fast had spy nor planes. stealthy, U-2s had one critical advantage. At 70,000 feet, they could fly above Soviet air defenses. Ooh. U.S. 
Who knew that the U2 uh, music band had a, their own plane? I never knew that. I'll stop with the dad jokes. I'll stop with the dad jokes. President Eisenhower was even assured Soviet radars couldn't detect the U-2 at such high altitudes. But it turns out the Americans were wrong. The Soviets had tracked the U-2 since day one, and it was only a matter of time before they'd be able to shoot one down. Simply flying high wasn't enough. Interesting. Even before the U-2 began its surveillance missions, there were already plans underway to replace it. Because true impunity over Soviet airspace would need a combination of incredible speed, altitude, and stealth. And this led the Americans to explore some pretty radical spy plane concepts, like a ramjet-powered aircraft that would be deployed from the bottom of a... Wait, I want to go back and look at that real quick. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Lockheed had two, the A-11-A-12. Which the A12 looks like this one that they're going to talk about. Max speed 3.2. Range 4.1 thousand miles with the A11. And then Convair, the fish. That's interesting. Mach 4.2. From the bottom of a supersonic B 58. But in 1959, the CIA chose Lockheed to develop the next generation of spy plane. Yeah. Meanwhile, the U 2 continued to fly over the Soviet Union, but not for very long. Because in the spring of 1960, a Soviet surface-to-air missile finally managed to bring one down. Ooh. The captured pilot and wreckage were paraded around the Soviet Union, used as proof of Western aggression. As tensions rose, now more than ever, the U.S. needed a replacement for the U-2. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the U.S. shouldn't have been pissing about up there, really, should they? It's not... They, they did it because they couldn't... Nothing could get them until they did get them. Do you know what I mean? And what Whoa. Lockheed developed would be unlike any aircraft ever built. It's a a plane that nearly 60 years after its first flight remains the fastest air-breathing jet to ever fly. Lockheed's highly classified spy plane would be known as the A-12. Originally used by the CIA for reconnaissance, the A-12 was also developed into an interceptor prototype armed with air-to-air -air missiles, nice. along with a variant that could launch an unmanned reconnaissance drone. But it was the SR-71 Blackbird, a variant developed for the Air Force, that would go on to serve for decades. So there was loads of other variants. It's very interesting how they come across with all these different variants, isn't it? It's very interesting, and I think it just shows how much adaptability these aircraft have and why that's important. Well, earlier versions were quickly retired. The Blackbird could cruise at Mach 3.2, right near the edge of space, and do it for hours on end. To achieve this, Lockheed's engineers had to innovate pretty much everything from scratch. To sustain such incredible speeds, the SR-71 and its predecessors were powered by engines often described as turbo ramjets. Woo. Below Mach 2, they functioned like conventional afterburning jet engines. But above that, they behaved more like ramjets, as an inlet cone adjusted to bypass air around the engine and directly into the afterburner. Wow. At Mach 3.2, the SR-71's exterior would heat up to beyond 500 degrees Fahrenheit, easily hot enough to soften aircraft aluminum. Holy cow. Lockheed engineers used titanium for 92% of the aircraft. No wonder. This, this must have been incredibly expensive. How much did they say it was? Did they say how much it was at the very start? I don't know if I remember if they said how much it cost this plane. It must have been a lot. And in the 1960s, this required inventing entirely new fabrication technologies. Its unusual shape did more than just spook UFO enthusiasts. <laughs> it helped reduce its radar signature, as did its special black paint, which earned the SR-71 its Blackbird name. Okay. Didn't, does it the told A12 us the cost of it? The SR-71 were first deployed over North Korea and Vietnam where they were unsuccessfully targeted by over 800 surface-to-air missiles. Oh, my God. But the spy plane never flew into Soviet airspace, at least not officially, because another shootdown over the Soviet Union would be catastrophic. Yeah. So instead, the SR-71 flew along its borders, using its powerful side-looking radars and cameras to peer hundreds of miles into Soviet territory.
Okay, so they weren't going to just... I mean, it makes sense not to risk it again. The worst thing that could happen is for the enemies to be able to get a hold of this aircraft, right? And and re- de-engineer it and figure out what's going on. Just kind of like what happened with the MiG-25, the Russian one, when a Russian pilot kind of just escaped Russia and gave away the whole secret, which is crazy, isn't it? And that frustrated the Soviets. In 1976, Viktor Belenko defected to the West by escaping yeah. the Soviet Union in go. his MiG-25. There you go. He described the frustration of trying to intercept Blackbirds. The MiGs were Mach 3 capable, but only for a few minutes at a time, not for hours like the Blackbird. Nor could they climb to reach the SR-71's incredible altitude. Mm. Even their enormous R-40 missiles lack the guidance needed to strike the SR-71 head-on. For years, the Blackbirds were practically invulnerable. Yeah. They could outfly and outclimb any threat. It's crazy that this was so long ago as well, and some of the stuff we have now. Most of the stuff for reconnaissance are satellites and stuff, aren't they? But by the 1980s, MiG 31s were roaming the skies. Equipped with sophisticated radar and long range R 33 missiles, they posed a legitimate threat. I do want to say there is obviously a massive place for drones and aircraft for reconnaissance. I'm not saying that everything's done by um satellites because that would be totally wrong but satellites play a big role these days especially if you want to look at something without being touched you have got certain things that can do that as well um but if you're going to look deep into russia you're not going to send aircraft or drones across there you're going to use satellites as did a new generation of soviet surface-to-air missiles but the greatest threat to the blackbird wasn't an enemy missile or jet it was itself no Blackbird was ever lost on a mission, but more than a third of the 50 built were destroyed in accidents. One literally disintegrated around its pilots. They were also oh enormously expensive to operate, each one siphoning about $300 million a year out of Jesus. America's defense budget. A fleet of special aerial refuelers and a small army of support and maintenance staff were needed just to keep these planes mission ready. And advances in spy satellites, aerial drones, and the SR-71's inability to deliver surveillance data in real time diminished some of the plane's utility. Yeah. Add to that politics and infighting for defense budgets, and by the late 1980s, the SR-71's days were numbered. They were officially retired in 1998, with two sent to NASA for testing. Wow. So the 1998, they retired. So the, not on not a massive, you know, time in the service considering you know aircraft that we see today that are still in from a long time ago as well. Very interesting. The technology behind the A12 and SR71 is now well over 50 years old. Woo! Yet somehow these incredible planes still speak to us, not about the past but the future, leaving us with a sense of wonder, unlike any other in aviation history. A few months ago, I launched my mustard site with Squarespace. It was fun, easy, and I did it literally in a few hours. But now it's time to take it to the next. Okay, so it's just mustard. an ad for his merch, selling mustard. Um, great video. I'll leave a link in the description if anyone wants to go and watch the video. Go over there, give it a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Very good video. Very interesting to see that the SR-71 uh, didn't have that long of a life in service, but it is a very um, iconic and unique shape, right? It's one of them that you see and you'd be like, oh, I've seen that before. Even someone like me who doesn't, well, now I am looking at a lot of aircraft because of the YouTube channel, but before the YouTube, I didn't really look at a lot. If I saw that aircraft, I'd be like, I've seen that. And not just from the Star Wars references, but I've seen that before somewhere. Um, very, very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Helps with that mysterious YouTube algorithm. I would really appreciate that. Other than that, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.